of course, the other day they announced um, that we got a Fantastic Four release date, right? At, well, a new Fantastic Four release date is going to be in July. But what kind of some people miss is that by opening up in July, that's uh, the same as a couple of other big movies, including a big superhero movie. As a matter of fact, the reemergence of the brand new DCU with Superman Legacy. And that is the topic of today's Mint Mobile hotline question of the day. Listen, guys, if you have a question for our show and you'd like to hear your voice on our show, go ahead and call our Mint Mobile hotline anytime, 24-7 at 951-268-4259. And today's question is about Superman and Fantastic Four. Check it out. Hey, John, this is Dalton from Mississippi. I was wondering what you guys thought about Fantastic Four and Superman Legacy releasing in the same month. I know you've said Superman won't do great at the box office, but do you think having to compete with Fantastic Four is going to make it that much harder? Or I don't know, maybe Superman does well, and Fantastic Four has to keep up with Superman. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks. Have a great day. All right, Dalton, thanks a lot for calling that in, man. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's now opening just a couple of weeks away from Superman Legacy. The actual release dates are, are right here. So we see Superman Legacy is opening up on July 11th, and then just two weeks later, Fantastic Four open up. And is this going to hurt or hinder the two films? Well, there's a couple of ways of looking at it. The first thing I want to throw out here, though, is this. I don't expect... Let me try that again. Mm-hmm. I expect that both of these films are going to be good. Uh, I have a lot of hope. I mean, yeah, they might end up being bad. I understand that. They might end up being terrible. But my expectations right now is that they're going to be great. Uh, obviously, I love the directors on both of them. I really like the casts on both of them. I like the writers on both of them. So I'm I'm going in expecting them to be great, understanding they might end up being terrible, but I think they'll be really good. Understanding that I think they're going to end up being quite good, I'm still not expecting monstrous box office from either of them. Not for their first films. Now, remember, Superman Legacy, the last Superman movie made like 600-something million at the box office, but since then... Since Man of Steel, the DCEU died and died ugly with five years of none of their films being able to make over $400 million until Aquaman 2 finally cracked the $400 million mark. But it's been ugly. Some of them under $200 million. It's just been uh, the audience abandoned the DCEU. So Superman is going to have to be that film that comes out first, the first penguin to jump in the water and kind of try to establish a new reputation of excellence, right? It's about rehabilitation right now. So Superman's going to come out. There's still going to be a lot of people who ha- who are going to doubt DC, understandably. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to doubt, who are, who are still kind of thought, I'm not ready yet to give DC another try. So Superman's number one job is to come out and be a great movie to start the rehabilitation so that the next DCU movie can do better and the one after that can do better than that. So I I think Superman Legacy can be a success. I just don't expect a lot of money from it. Fantastic Four, kind of same thing. Number one, Marvel isn't in the best place right now. At least not as they're not as healthy as they used to be. Deadpool 2 may, might help turn that around, but we'll see. Or Deadpool 3, I should say, but we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. There have been four Fantastic Four movies, if you want to count the Corman one. If you don't, fine. We were in three Fantastic Four movies. All of them sucked, and they didn't do great. And the reality is not a lot of people... I mean, just a few years ago, Fantastic Four, the comic book, even got canceled. I mean, not a lot of people, you know, hardcore comic book fans notwithstanding, not a lot of people are enamored with the Fantastic Four. So while I think this could be the new cornerstone for the MCU... I don't expect that the first movie is going to make a billion dollars. I think it's it's going to be about building things up so that the second one is even better, right? There, there's a plan. You gotta you gotta look long term. You can't just look short term as the next movie, but you gotta think long term and building up towards something. So that being said, that I don't expect either to do gangbusters, there's two different ways of looking at the question: are these can these things do well financially when they're just two weeks apart, or is it gonna hurt them? There's two different ways you can look at it. On the one hand, you can say, well, just look at what happened in 2023. Oppenheimer and Barbie literally opened on the same day. 
and one of them made well over a billion, and one of them almost made a billion. So you could look at it that way. And, and Superman and Fantastic Four are literally two weeks apart. They're two weeks separated. The other way you could look at it is say, okay, yeah, the Barbenheimer example, but those were two radically different movies going af after radically different audiences. This is Superman and Fantastic Four. Th these are two movies that are going after the same demographic. And that could cause a problem. Another way of looking at it is this. If people go out to see Superman Legacy first on July 11th, and if it's as good as we hope it is, they might be revving to get back to the theater to see another comic book movie. Mm -hmm. And they got another one coming in just two weeks, and that could really help Fantastic Four. Or, conversely, if Superman Legacy sucks, which I don't expect it will, but anything's possible, then people might get a real bad taste in their mouth and going, uh, yeah, I'm not going back out to the theaters again until we see the next comic book movie. I mean, so there's a whole bunch of wild dynamics here. I will say this, though. On an all other things being equal basis, do I think Superman Legacy or Fantastic Four will make the more money in the month of July? I'm going to say Fantastic Four. It, it just has more going. For, like, yeah, as much as the MCU is not in its healthiest state right now, it's still in great shape compared to the 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 rubble of the DCEU that Superman Legacy is going to try to emerge from, like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Um, so I'm going to say Fantastic Four on that. So uh, that's my guess at any rate. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Harry's. You know, guys, in order to start the John Campia show, I had to leave my high paying corporate job in order to set myself up to be happier and enjoy more personal success. Because sometimes to get what you want, you have to challenge the status quo and blaze your own trail. And that's exactly what the folks at Harry's did. You see, at Harry's, they saw customers getting ripped off by questionable products in the shaving industry and decided to do something better. Harry's decided to pave their own road by making beautifully designed razors for a fraction of the price of the other big brands. Except Exceptional products, honest prices. That's Harry's. I have fallen in love with Harry's from their foaming shaving gel that feels just luxurious on the skin to their incredible razor that feels just as good in the hand as it does going over your skin. They've got rich lathering skin softening body wash and scents like redwood, wildlands, and stone. You see, Harry's provides German engineered blades made in their own factory that stay sharp longer. You can get a five blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover for just three bucks at harrys.com slash campia. Don't settle for the status quo. Blaze your own trail with Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash campia. That's harrys.com slash campia for a $3 trial set. Chris, we got, if you're looking forward to these movies, mm -hmm. July 2025, but by the way, we also got Jurassic Apparently, I'm sure that's going to move because yeah. they lost their director. But there's a couple of other big things coming out, too. But with these two pillar comic book movies, which one does better with the audience, do you think? Well, and we've got Comic-Con in July always, too. Right. So this is going to be a huge kind of arms race for DC and Marvel. For me, I, I am a Marvel girl. I, I know that I make no no claims to be otherwise i would put my eggs in the basket of fantastic four mostly because of the star power behind it um i think pedro pascal vanessa kirby uh just quinn and obviously yvonne are all very big rising stars and i think that'll help a lot too also you had a tremendous comic book come out for the fantastic four just in october of 2023 alex ross's full circle um if you want to break down on that you can go back and watch our weekly hero on it back in the day when rob and i were doing <laughs> that show still um but it's an amazing comic that i think hopefully is what's fueling a lot of this because it feels like that kind of atomic age super fun sci-fi and i think that movie has so much potential if they lean into that one of the things that we've talked about with superhero movies that dc honestly has done a much better job of then is playing with genre within the superhero world right mm. joker as much as i don't enjoy that film it is a psychological study of a character the batman is a gritty film noir seven-esque film that happens to have a superhero character in it right when you play with genre within the superhero realm i think that's a much more fun cool thing to do mm -hmm. and if fantastic four does that they could have an excellent hit on their hands and that's where i think dc has the upper hand ultimately in that they have been willing to play around with things. They've been willing to play with tone. They've been willing to make things maybe not as primary colors, fun, happy times, maybe make it for the kids sometimes. They've been willing to take risks. 
and I think that's when they faltered, right? Is a lot of their stuff then started becoming mimics of Marvel. Mm. And when they've done their own things, when they've done things in a kind of else worlds kind of way, that's when they've really thrived. So if Marvel kind of for once steals from them and goes, hey, what if we make this really, really pulpy sci-fi? What if we make this feel like it's from the 1960s or 70s? Well, if we lean to that kind of Kirby, Alex Ross vibe, I think this one could do really, really well and make a ton of money. Plus, as much as Marvel has suffered from people not really believing in a lot of their movies as well, it did have some hits like Guardians. It did have wonderful shows every now and then. DC really has been lacking lately, and I feel like people have lost their faith in DC more than Marvel. Of course, that's just my own personal opinion. And maybe people are going to get really excited about having a Superman back in theaters after all of this time. But I would bet on a Fantastic Four personally. Yeah. And by the way, we're not talking about which one we think will be the better movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're a long ways away from that. But I think right now, I, I think Fantastic Four is the one who pulls up. Now, then the question would be, if they're both great and both of them have sequels come out at the same time, which one makes more then? Well, all bets sure. are off at that point. I'm hoping it's just, yeah, that Barbenheimer kind of thing. I want both of these movies to succeed. I want both of them to create that momentum. And I want us to have good superhero movies. I think it's so silly when people don't root for these movies to do well. I mean, I think it's, it's so not silly. silly. It's it's, it's I mean, plain moronic. Yeah, it's I really just, stupid. I, even though I gravitate towards Marvel because that's what I grew up with, I love DC. And those characters are iconic and wonderful. I don't want guns universe to fail i don't want anyone else's movies to do poorly it's like being on a plane and thinking that your pilot's an asshole so you hope the plane crashes i'm on that plane i don't want to crash i want us to have a nice fun ride well it's like rob always says uh, like we what if you're a real film fan you should hope every movie that comes out is great i mean we i, I go into every movie i went into madam web hoping that it would prove everybody wrong Sure. That I would come out going, you know what? That wasn't bad. I mean, we should all hope every movie is great, but the problem is when you have people that they need to have a team, they need to have an identity. Oh, the identity. tribalism. So they yeah. need to have an yeah. identity, and it's like, it's so pathetic. your identity is this person's like production. Get sure. a life. Yeah. See, here's here's the thing, and I've talked about this a lot over the years. The tribalism in film fandom is is just like so stupid. Like it's pathetic. Like there's nothing wrong with saying I. I'm a DC fan. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you start defining your fandom by what you hate, see, I'm a DC mm -hmm. fan. That means I hate Marvel and anything that they do. Oh, okay, then you're just pathetic. I mean, it's, it's fine if you just, no, naturally, I've watched every Marvel movie. I've hoped I would enjoy every Marvel movie, but none of them will work for me. That's totally fair. But And vice versa. Like Marvel fans are like, I'm a Marvel fan. That's great. And so I hope DC fails. What? Do you think that's going to help your Marvel movies at all? The DC movies do bad? Like, I'll never understand that so kind weird of to me. pathetic tribalism that has been a part of fandom. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called The John Campy Show Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.